Axl Rose is arguably one of the most recognizable and talked about rock stars on the planet. Today in Rockfeed history, we're taking a look at his career beginning with 1984 up to the present day. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe with notifications on. Rockfeed publishes daily hard rock and heavy metal news stories, so subscribe now to make sure you don't miss out on any breaking news. Love him or hate him, Axl Rose is one of the most controversial figures in rock and roll history. He's always had two extremes for his personality, revered by millions of fans around the world, or he's looked upon as a misogynistic, maniacal lead singer who came from a dysfunctional household and took out all of his frustrations on his bandmates or in his songs. In the 1980s, Hollywood was the promised land. It was where dreams could happen for anyone who wanted to be a rock star. Some of the early rock and roll heroes like Tom Petty and Van Halen came right out of Hollywood, and Axel wanted to be part of the scene and have his shot at rock and roll stardom. So he joined his schoolmate, Jeff, AKA Izzy Stradlin, out in LA. The duo formed a group called AXL, but that name would soon be changed to Hollywood Rose. And Vicki Hamilton was brought on to manage the band. Punk and glam rock dominated the Sunset Strip. It was flooded with bands, and throughout the early months of 1984, Hollywood Rose continued to play with increasing success. Hamilton was also booking Slash's band Black Sheep, and she introduced Slash to Axel when Hollywood Rose opened up for Black Sheep and Striper at the Music Machine. In West LA, shortly after Chris Webber, guitarist of Hollywood Rose, departed for New York City, Slash became Hollywood Rose's guitarist joined by Steven Adler on drums and Duff McGagan on bass. This formed the original lineup of Guns N' Roses. They played at the Troubadour and then started appearing more frequently on the LA club circuit. This is when they started developing their fan base and attracted major record labels along their way. Just before signing his official contract with Geffen Records in 1986, he legally got his name changed to W. Axel Rose. In 1987, the band released their debut album, Appetite for Destruction, which became a huge success despite its slow start. The album was included in the year's best list and sold over a million copies in the United States alone. Their fan base expanded so quickly and in such large numbers that in 1988, during the Monsters of Rock Festival in England, two fans were crushed to death when the crowds began dancing to their hit, It's So Easy. From then on, Rose made it a point to address his fans to calm down. He's even halted shows on numerous occasions to pacify the audience. In 1988, they released the album GNR Lies, which became an extremely popular album, but it was also severely criticized for promoting homophobic attitudes and prejudiced sentiments in the song One in a Million. By 1989, Guns N' Roses had become one of the frontrunner bands in the world of rock and roll music and the same year he appeared solo on the cover of the prestigious Rolling Stone magazine. Despite not having an album to promote in 1991, the band left on a two-year tour called Use Your Illusion. Rose received a lot of flack from his critics for his on-stage antics and his late starts. The same year, the band released two albums, Use Your Illusion 1 and Use Your Illusion 2. The final show for Guns N' Roses during the Use Your Illusion tour took place on July 17, 1993 in Buenos Aires, which also proved to be Rose's last performance with the band for the next seven and a half years. In November the same year, the band released The Spaghetti Incident, which was not very successful, unlike their previous albums. Through the 90s, he remained a recluse and didn't appear in the public much after taking a hiatus from the band. Although the group never disbanded, they didn't release any new material through the remainder part of the 1990s. In 2001, he was once again seen at Rock in Rio 3. He was known to have fired all of his previous musicians without even consulting them for no reason. He was engaged nine times to Gina Seiler before they separated in 1985. The following year, he began dating Erin Everly and married her on April 28, 1990. Less than a month after their marriage, the couple filed for divorce. They reconciled and Everly became pregnant. She suffered a miscarriage which deeply affected Rose because he wanted to start a family with her. The duo annulled their marriage the following year. Sometime during 1991, he began dating Stephanie Seymour, who already had a son, Dylan. Rose became extremely attached to the boy. The couple got engaged in 1993, but separated after a few weeks. During Rose's late teens, a psychiatrist concluded that his delinquent behavior was evidence of psychosis. 
By the age of 26, Rose had been diagnosed with bipolar disorder. In a subsequent interview, Rose questioned the diagnosis altogether. In the early 1990s, Rose became a believer in homeopathic medicine, and he began to regularly undergo past life regression therapy. He shared his uncovered memories of being sexually abused by his biological father, which he said had stopped his emotional growth at two years old. He also stated, when they talk about Axel Rose being a screaming two-year-old, they're right. Some fans have had the pleasure of meeting him and can attest that Axel Rose is a really nice guy. A lot of times when you hear news about Axel Rose, you expect it to be about a brash, cocky rock star. But many people report how lovely he is as a human being. Guns N' Roses are about to start on their first album in more than a quarter century. The effort would be the first by the United Band since 1993. Rose released the long-delayed Chinese Democracy in 2008 with a different lineup of players, but the new album would mark the first time since the singer has recorded with Slash and McGagan since 1993's covers effort, The Spaghetti Incident. The band's blockbuster Not In This Lifetime tour played 159 shows in 41 countries between April 2016 and December 2018. So with Axl Rose and Guns N' Roses, almost nothing is certain. But a new album is looking more and more like a genuine possibility. Slash recently confirmed materials in the works, and now Duff McKagan has also told radio DJ Eddie Trunk that it's happening. With everything we've learned about Axl Rose, we know something is definitely brewing. Love him or hate him, he can't deny that Axl Rose has been on his best behavior lately, showing up on time for rehearsals, showing basic respect for his bandmates and their fans, and taking the time to get into vocal and physical shape for the busiest year of his life. It's pretty clear that the rock and roll bad boy is committed to taking his opportunity at a second shot with Guns N' Roses seriously, leaving fans wondering exactly what inspired Axl to do a complete overhaul of his bad boy behavior. Rose revealed that the ACDC guitarist and founder, Angus Young, had been a major force in Axel's evolution as a professional musician, making him want to show up every day and be the best he can be. Axel said, It's great. I can't really explain it. I feel protective. I feel like I don't want to let this guy down, and I don't know why. For someone like Axel, who's used to doing things on their own terms, it's humbling to work with a legend of Angus Young's caliber. While Angus is a great guy and an even greater musician, he is also strictly no-nonsense when it comes to all things ACDC. You show up, respect your bandmates, and give it everything you've got, or you can leave. With the announcement of new music coming out of Guns N' Roses, we're excited to see what the future holds for Axl Rose.